the studios of Sondland University, this is Robcast, the light-hearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello, Robcast listeners. Uh, welcome to a new show. I'm Peter Tisher. And I'm Roger Charlton. And this will be the last in a series on austerity. We're, by the way, still looking for new topics, so contact us if you want something that we have not dealt with yet. But we're dealing again with austerity today. Yeah, I must say we've had some really interesting suggestions mm-hmm. over the months that we've been doing these podcasts. Mm-hmm. So I do hope people will write in with their own favorites. Yeah, yeah, I certainly hope so, too. Contact us at www.ropecast.de. Well, you know, speaking of contact, the big thing in Britain recently has been, for university students, how many contact hours do I get when I take a course of studies? Uh huh. Are they protesting that they are not getting enough for their tuition? Well, you mentioned that tuition fees have been increased in Britain. <laughs> Quite so. And students who are paying £9,000, of course, want something for their money. German listeners, get a load of that. <laughs> £9,000. <laughs> and it seems logical to suggest that mm-hmm. the more hours they have of instruction, mm-hmm. uh, the more they're getting for their money. That's mm-hmm. contact hours. Okay. If uh, Great Britain has apparently reduced contact hours, have the increased uh, distance learning offers? Well, I think it depends, would... it depends on the university and it depends on the course of studies because mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. some types of um, studies do not lend themselves to distance learning. I think if you're if you're studying music, for example, and you have mm-hmm. to play a musical instrument, and mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to do that through distance learning. Yeah, in some parts of medicine, you know, we have yeah. to, I don't know, to dissect someone. <laughs> it doesn't really work, does it? I think the interesting thing is it may seem logical to ask for more contact hours. Yes. But research has shown that the number of contact hours is almost irrelevant when it comes to the final outcome. That is, Do I get a degree? Do I get a good degree? Uh Uh-huh. That would, of course, um, be right up the alley of some university presidents who would like to cut staff. Right. But But? it is the type of contact that is important for outcomes, Uh not the number of hours. Okay. Do you know what the single most important element is? for successful outcomes. That means, do I get a degree? Do I get a good degree? The single most important aspect. Well, frankly speaking, being a university teacher, uh, probably I should, (laughs) but (laughs) you sound like I'd give the wrong answer. What is it? (laughs) I think most people would struggle for a while. The most important aspect is how many hours do students do on their own? That is outside the course. Uh Uh-huh. So the prime task of the instructor would seem to be to motivate students to do the work. Okay, outside of class. Which is, by the way, maybe a place where distance instruction would come back in. I think so. I think a good concept in that case might be having a certain number of contact hours to establish a personal relationship with the student in class and then keep up that contact outside of class to sort of get him going on his own time. Yeah, absolutely. Are there any other factors, though, uh, that affect the learning outcomes? Well, we mentioned last time that um, universities offer huge lectures in some subjects, and there Mm -hmm. seems to be no way of avoiding that. Mm -hmm. That would be almost the worst thing to do. Okay. Because um, an hour of lecture is not going to generate very many hours of self-study among the students. Mm-hmm. So it, it depends on the type of contact the students are getting. In the worst case, we won't mention any names here, but mm-hmm. there are institutions where an hour of class contact generates 40 minutes of self-study. Mm-hmm. And in the best case, perhaps through tutorials, one hour of class contact might generate 20 hours of self-study. So those are the the extremes. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to create a a learning environment 
that sort of encourages students to do work outside of class, but at the same time maybe also give them certain types of assignments that motivate them. Oh, yes. Them. I'm sure that's very important indeed. Yeah. I've, I've had, in fact, uh, I've had a, um, uh, we have a teacher who makes people or who makes their students create videos, English videos, and students are sometimes complaining about the hours it takes them to do those videos, but at the same time, of course, they are dealing with English for hours and hours and hours, and apparently that's working quite well. Oh, yes. Well, we both know that uh, what we do in the classroom is not really making a significant difference to the skills of the learners. Unfortunately, <laughs> sometimes it's frustrating. <laughs> they they have to work on those themselves. Mm -hmm. How did you do it? I mean, how do you motivate students? I think um, that is a huge topic which we might save for another occasion. Okay, okay. I am motivated to do another podcast with you, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, let's not talk about austerity next time. Oh, uh, no, no. Let's talk about something more fun. I think this whole question of distance learning and blended learning would be an interesting uh, topic. <laughs> you were looking for a word. Oh, God, you're looking for a word. <laughs> it happens to you, too. <laughs> Just made my day. And I hope we made your day, folks. Tune in next time for another Ropecast. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.